The Learning Journey in association with Turn It Up Tuesday hosted by Ross Audio Presents Did You Know? And this week we will explore death in Jamaica back in the 1920s. Yes, Jamaican people are very superstitious. Even to this day, many of these traditions happen. When someone died in Jamaica back then, there was an elaborate ritual surrounding their burial. These practices stem from deep-seated fear of the contamination power of death and the belief that the dead person would return to haunt them or harm the living if not properly buried. Let's face it, two men back then were tasked with washing the corpse, working carefully from the head to the feet and never doubling backwards. If they did so, of course, the corpse would laugh. If either men accidentally brushed the corpse back with water, it is said that the deceased would later visit him and complain of a chill. As the grave clothes were sewn, care had to be taken to ensure not to tie any knots. If there were knots, the spirit may come back with these knots tied. Still tied, that is. Pockets of men being buried were, of course, cut out to ensure that they could not return with anything in them. Because, for example, if they returned, they would return with stones to pelt the living. Any buttons would be removed and the garments pinned or sewn together. You want to make sure that person stays in. After dressing the body, two or more people will lift it up and lay it back down three times before finally settling it in the coffin. I just wondered why three times. The deceased head must face the west and the feet east during this ritual of lifting. While prayers were being said, the closed coffin had to sit on two chairs. Each relative approached the coffin to say a few words. Children were lifted up over the casket and their names spoken out aloud. No tears must fall on the body or the spirit may return to the mourner. Even if summoned, someone who quarreled with the deceased must not come to make amends on the death bed or he may be in for a real treat when the ghost arrives for revenge. A bereaved spouse wears a black mourning cloth marked with a white chalk across for months. The barber who shaved the corpse safeguards himself by carrying his own razor. The carpenter who builds the coffin crosses each board with a chalk. If this doesn't happen, of course the casket will be heavy. He must also keep a ruler and a chalk to ward off the evil spirits. Fear of contamination also sheep customs. No one must or should kiss the dead. Or if he does that, his teeth will rot away. A person with sores must make a ring of indigo around them before entering where the body lies. If not, their wounds will worsen. When sewing the grave clothes, you should not wet the thread with your teeth. These are just some warnings. A baker should not enter the room when his bread is raising, or the yeast will fail to work. Pipes and tobaccos and knives are placed in a casket for future use of the dead. This prevents the ghost from returning to claim the cherished possessions. The driving fear is that the living could be contaminated by the dead. Many believe that no natural death occurred before the time was right, but rather an enemy's evil spell struck them down. When foul play is suspected, the family members may name the culprit. If the death was a result of possible murder, corpse may be dressed in black, boots and spurs, armed with a knife and a whip to ride and kill its adversary upon rising. Let us face it, there are so many things that I've mentioned here, but the reality is things have changed, traditions have changed, but some of these still live on. I remember back in my days in Jamaica, I knew someone who worked at a funeral parlor and he insisted that he had to protect himself from the evil spirits that were surrounding these individuals as he took care of them, getting them dressed for funerals and so forth. He was also a videographer and as a matter of fact, he was called by many who loved him dearly, Duppy Photo, for some reasons I don't know why. But eventually he would say that at one point he was giving a bath to corpse and he felt a hand behind him and when he looked around, it was indeed 
the hand of corpse that he was washing. Sad to see he has passed on, but let me tell you, he was a man that believed in the superstitious nature of traditions. And I believe until today, as we are having this session, that many Jamaicans are still clouded in their superstition. Stay tuned, I have another section that I'm coming up with next week. You'll hear more. Over to Rossi.